The first step in creating your practice exam is to click on Create an Assessment. You'll be doing an answer key only assessment and then put in the name of your assessment. If you're going to use the same practice exam in the future, you may want to put in the year of that practice exam. And then I have 60 multiple choice questions and six FRQs. Um, you do not have to put the FRQs in if you would just you know, rather have the multiple choice, that's absolutely fine. And then this is the step where you can push out your practice exam to your own courses, but you can also push out this practice exam to um, the other courses at your sister school. So notice that I'm also making sure to include um, Laura Boyle's courses at Central along with my own. And then selecting the grade, content area, those kind of things just make it easier if you're searching to find this assessment um, in upcoming years. So I would recommend filling in the rest of those as well on the property page. Once that's finished, you're going to want to go ahead and move to the answer key layout form. And notice here that there are five different multiple choice um, options and my test only has four. So that's something that I wanna change, but I wanna change it for all of my 60 multiple choice questions. So this option allows me to change all of those that for that entire group at once instead of doing it individually. Make sure to hit save. And then the next thing that I need to do is actually put in my answers. And notice at the bottom, that's where um, we have our FRQs. Um, my long FRQs are FRQs one and two, and on my practice exam, those are worth nine points, so I'm putting that in. And then my shorter FRQs are only worth four points, so I'm changing that as well. And then question 61 on my practice exam is actually my FRQ number one. So I'm just putting that short description in there. So when I actually go in and input those um, questions, or if I have the students bubble that in, there'll be a little description there to make sure that we don't get confused. Um, what I will probably do is give students their bubble sheets back, and when we grade those FRQs in class, they can actually um, bubble in how many points that they have received to kind of lessen my workload. And then finally, the last thing to do on this answer key layout page is to put in the answers to the multiple choice questions. I always try to make sure to, to save um, periodically because sometimes Mastery Manager will kind of log me out, especially if I'm not actively working on the screen and I get distracted. The last thing I'm going to do is go to the sharing button and I want to share this assessment with my counterpoint at Central. So I'm going to give them the ability to view this assessment and to edit it. Um, so I can either do that by looking for a specific teacher um, so we can look through all of those names and if you have specific teachers that you want to share that with, um, you can click on their name. If you have multiple teachers you want to share that with, as long as you hit control as you're clicking on their name, you can select multiple teachers. Um, or another option you can do is you can um, share it with anyone teaching the course. So I can go to anyone teaching AP Biology and share it with all of those instructors. And if there's more than two instructors teaching that course, that's usually um, the best option. Notice when you do this, it's not just the course, it's the um, period as well. So make sure that you click on all of those periods that that course is available. Now that we've created our assessment, the next thing to do is to print these generic bubble sheets that any student could use when they take your practice exam. 
So we're going to move over to forms. When we get to forms, we're going to want to unclick print forms for selected students because we want generic sheets. And then we're going to deselect or unclick the print questions because we're not having questions on this test, just the bubble sheet. Um, I did click print on both sides of the form. This is an option if you think your test is going to go over multiple forms. And then here, number of blank forms to print. You need to change that from zero to a specific number. I'm gonna print a few extra just in case a student makes a mistake. Then we click generate forms to print. And we should be able to download a PDF of these generic bubble sheets. And I'll show you what these generic bubble sheets look like. Um, what you're going to notice is that in the upper left-hand corner, um, those numbers, that's where the students can bubble in their ID number. Obviously, we want them to put their name on it as well. Um, but then any student can use that bubble sheet, and it does not need to be tied to that student in any way other than them filling in their ID number.